I call the honourable member Louisa Wall. Tenakwe. Tenakwe. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. Uh, it is my pleasure uh, to stand um, in support of the Misuse of Drugs Amendment Bill. Uh, but I do want to highlight uh, in my beginning, uh, beginning of my speech um, the Law Commission review. Uh, the Law Commission has reviewed uh, the misuse of drugs comprehensively and what they concluded by saying is that the most fundamental issue with the Act is that it seems poorly aligned with New Zealand's current drug policy based on the principle of harm minimisation. So I want to highlight that, that we have had a comprehensive review, and this was one of the critical findings of the Law Commission's uh, report. And the other thing that the Law Commission uh, concluded with uh, was, uh, we think that these changes can only be affected by a completely new Act, and the repeal of the existing Act is therefore necessary. A Excuse me. A key issue is how um, any new legislative framework might better support the pillars of uh, Julie, demand reduction and problem limitation in drug policy. So um, as um, a party, we very much uh, concur with the Law Commission's position, Mr Speaker. So we do support this bill, but we remain concerned that the bill, uh, as written, would not achieve the aims of reducing the availability of methamphetamine or, redu or reducing drug-related harm. Now, I did not have the pleasure uh, of sitting on the Health Select Committee and hearing submissions, um, but um, probably what I do want to highlight, uh, given the purposes of the bill, and I won't read through them again, but it is to, uh, I guess, linger on the point um, over the ext extended controls over drug paraphernalia. So um, in the Select Committee report, I just want to highlight uh, that most submissions we, receive, uh, we, re we received expressed opposition to the proposed amendments to the utensils provision. Many argued that prohibiting drug utensils would be ineffective and would increase the harm suffered by drug users because they would make their own utensils or would buy them illegally. So I do want to highlight at this point in time um, my colleague Ian Lees Galloway uh, and the fact that he has signalled uh, he signalled when he spoke on this bill uh, earlier uh, that we will be pushing forward an amendment to have Clause 4 removed from this piece of legislation. So Clause 4 does relate to drug utensils and in fact uh, from the information I have um, no submitter at the Health Select Committee said that uh, this particular provision of the bill uh, was going to achieve anything. So in fact we heard that potentially we will see an increase in the harm caused by people who will be using ad hoc replacements. I actually think this is something that we need to take seriously uh, and, um, and as such we're obviously going to put forward um, our own supplementary order paper uh, to that effect. So it was very interesting in having an opportunity to, um, to speak on this particular bill uh, and for me I decided to go to the Law Commission uh, as a source um, of information because I hadn't been involved uh, in the Select Committee process. And what I found really interesting is that overwhelmingly um, there's clear evidence that we do have a problem in New Zealand. So in 2001 and 2003 uh, New Zealand's National Household Survey um, did look at amphetamine uh, and methamphetamine use and it was the second most widely used illegal drug in New Zealand. So we know that we have a problem. This is after cannabis. Uh, so in 2001, 5% of New Zealanders who responded to this survey said they used methamphetamine during the previous year. And this definitely concurs with international trends about the prevalence of such use, which really started in the 90s, or in the late 1990s. So the Law Commission uh, reported that overall levels of use of psychoactive substances were noted as significant, and the overall portion of the population using um, drugs is, isn't really changing. So, I mean, we do have to do something uh, that I said before at, um, from one uh, level is going to reduce uh, the use of drugs, but on, a la on another level we have to look at uh, how we reduce the harm uh, for people who do use drugs. And um, so there is 
uh, general agreement, I think, from everybody that we do have a drug problem in New Zealand. Um, but as has been uh, stated quite clearly, uh, we do not believe that this ad hoc, uh, the ad hoc manner in which uh, amendments over consecutive years uh, to this particular piece of legislation um, is going to achieve much at all. So we concur, as I said earlier, with the uh, Law Commission report that there should be um, an overhaul of this entire uh, misuse of drugs um, legislation. Um, the other aspects that um, I did want to highlight, in fact, were the continued amendments to the Misuse of Drugs Act uh, that uh, was first enacted in 1975. So it's been really interesting uh, going through the different changes that happened in 1978 and of note actually was a provision which, which authorised the detention of a person for up to 21 days without being charged where there is reason to believe that that person had concealed a Class A or B drug. Um, in 1988, for example, uh, it was permitted um, the possession of needles and syringes that had been obtained through authorised needle exchange pro programmes. Uh, and at that time, it was to try to reduce the risk of blood-borne infection from dirty or shed needles with, within the context of a concern over the risk of the HIV virus spreading among intravenous drug users. So as we have seen historically, we actually have been concerned about harm minimisation within the context of the evolution of this bill. Um, and actually the, the Law Commission themselves uh, were very clear that our approach to various drugs is inextricably linked to our history and our culture. And our regulatory framework for psychoactive substances must recognise political and social realities. And I guess one of those realities that we're facing today are the creation of analogues or products um, like, such as Chronic uh, that have been developed uh, that through whatever means are deemed to be legal within the context of um, that commodity being able to be purchased um, publicly. And um, I guess we're now looking at how those substances uh, engage and interact in a society where our young people uh, are at huge risk. So uh, it's timely uh, that we have an opportunity yet again to look at the Misuse of Drugs Act, but as I contended um, and as my colleagues have contended previously, we should not do it in this band-aid ad hoc way. We should actually do it in a comprehensive way. And uh, it is... Um, yeah, it is good that we're going to have some measures uh, within uh, this bill that are going to addre address uh, some of the issues um, that we have in terms of the provision of, of drugs, but um, we would contend that uh, unless we have a comprehensive uh, overview, um, that we are not going to uh, address much at all. Um, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I really don't have much more to add uh, other than... Um, I uh, want to congratulate all the people who have uh, participated in the democratic process uh, who submitted um, on this particular bill. Uh, I know it is an issue uh, that we must see within the context um, of substances that um, people are using today because they have problems in their lives. And um, I think that uh, it's very important that we continue to put um, drugs um, on the agenda, particularly for our young people. So I look forward to the continued debate around this particular piece of legislation uh, and I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on this bill. Thank you. Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Chris